In this video, we're looking at how we can add a total row onto the bottom of an array so that as that array expands or contracts, the total row also moves. Not just that, we're also going to dynamically change the calculations inside that total row. This is a mind blowing technique. I thought, should I just save it for my membership program? And then I decided it's just too good not to share. So if you're ready, let's get started. For our first example, we're going to use the array functions of vStack, hstack, and choose calls to calculate our total row. So let's go and head over into Excel and take a look. On the left, we have our data. We have item, units, region, and value columns. To create our array, we're going to use the filter function and filter where the item is equal to alpha. In cell H7, I'm going to add that filter function. So it's going to filter our data table where the item column is equal to H4. And if that is empty, it's going to return an array of empty text strings. That calculation has four rows. If we change alpha to Bravo, that calculation changes and we now have three rows. So this is the array which we want to add our total row to. Let's go and edit our formula. We are going to use the let function so that we can create variables for each stage of our calculation. At the start, I'll add let, opening bracket. I'll then press Alt and Enter to create a new row. The first variable that we want to create is called array. And we're going to assign our filter calculation to that variable. At the end of that line, we will add a comma, and then we can press Alt and Enter to create another new line. The next variable will be called total. And the calculation that we want to assign to that will be based on the H stack function. Now our array has four columns. So we want our total row to also have four columns. The value in the first column is going to be total and that's in double quotes. For our second column, let's suggest that we want to sum that column, which means we're going to use the sum function and the values that we want to sum are going to be based on the choose calls function. For the array argument of choose calls, we want to use the result of our array variable. And then for the col num one argument, we want to return the second column. That will therefore give us the sum of column two as a result. The next column is region. We don't need a total for this, so we're going to enter an empty text string. For the value column, let's suggest that we want to sum those values. I'm going to select our previous sum and choose calls calculation. I'll then copy that and paste that as our fourth column. All I have to do then is change our column num one from two to four. We can then close all of those brackets, enter a comma and create a new line. The next variable that we're going to create is called result. For this, we're going to use the vStack function. The first array will be our array variable and then our second array will be the total variable. Then for the final argument of let, we declare the value that we want to return and we want to return our result. When we calculate that, we now have our array with our total row at the bottom. If we change Bravo to alpha, when that recalculates, our total row is still at the bottom of that array, even though it has a different number of rows. So that's how we can calculate the numbers. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like a total. So we want to use conditional formatting so that we can make that total bold and also provide a border. Now, unfortunately, conditional formatting is not dynamic. Therefore, we need to select a range which is bigger than the range which our array will occupy. Then from the home ribbon, we can select conditional formatting, new rule. And we want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. We currently have cell H7 selected. Therefore, our formula is going to be equals dollar H7 equals total and total is in double quotes. So that means anything which contains the word total in that first column selected will be formatted. I'll click the format button and we want to apply a top border and we also want the font to be bold. I'll click OK and OK again. That has formatted those cells. Now let's go and change alpha to Charlie. That total row once again moves. And this time the formatting also moves with that row. Now come on, admit it, that's a pretty nice technique, but there's a different technique that we can use 
that opens up the ability for the user to decide what values they want to see in that total row. So let's go and take a look at that new technique. For this example, we have the same data and I have already created our let and filter calculation in cell H9. And we've created a variable called array to hold the result of our filter function. We've also created a variable called result, which currently just holds our array. And finally, we are returning that result. We also have cells which represent the values that we want to appear in the total row. In cell H4, I'm going to enter the word total. In cell I4, I'm going to enter the word sum because we want to see a sum calculation. In cell J4, we don't want to see any calculation. Therefore, I'm going to enter space as a text value. And finally, in K4, we're going to enter sum once again because we want to sum our value column. Now let's go and edit our formula and we're going to create a new variable called calc type. For this, we're going to use the switch function. The first argument of switch is expression. We want to select cells H4 to K4. How switch works is that there are pairs of values, a value and a result. So we want to say initially that if our value in that range equals the text of sum, then the result that we want to return is sum. Now, because of eta reduction, that value there of sum, which is not in double quotes, is not a text value. It is actually a function. And we can use this method for any function where all of the arguments are of the same type. Therefore, we could also use a function like average. For value two, I'll use average in double quotes. And then for result two, we're going to return the average function. Let's add one more. For value three, we're going to enter count A in double quotes. And then for result three, we're going to enter count A without any double quotes. And we can continue to add as many functions as we need. Now switch also has a default value. That means if it doesn't find sum or average or count A, what value do we want it to return? For that, we're going to select the range H4 to K4. What that means, for example, is that because the word total isn't in our list, it will return the word total. But if it finds sum, average or count A, it will then return that corresponding function. OK, now let's create a new variable called col index. And in here, we just want to create a sequence of numbers that represents how many columns in our array. For that, we're going to use the sequence function. The first argument of sequence is rows. We want one row. The second argument is columns, and we want that to be based on the number of columns. Therefore, we can use the columns function, and that can be based on the array or calc type variables because they have the same number of columns. In this scenario, because we have four columns, it will create an array of numbers one, two, three, and four. Now let's create a new variable called total calc, and we want to calculate the total for each column using the value returned by the switch function. To do this, we're going to loop over the values returned by our col index. Therefore, I will add the map function, and for the array, we're going to use col index. Because we're looping over an array, we need to use the lambda function, and then for each value inside that array, we're going to call that v. That means for our first loop, v will be equal to one. For our second loop, v will be equal to two, and then three, and then four. So we want to calculate each column individually. For that, we're going to use the by col function. For the array argument, we're going to use choose cols, and we're going to use the choose cols based on our array variable. And the column that we want is going to be based on our variable of v. That means for the first loop, it's going to select all the values in the first column. For the second loop, it's going to select all the values in the second column, and so on. To apply the relevant calculation to each column, we're going to use choose coles once again, but this time we want to look in our calc type array. And the column that we want to return is again based on our v variable. For our first loop, it's going to return the word total as text. For our second loop, it's going to return the sum function, and so on. Now you might be thinking, well, how can we apply total as a calculation? And the answer is we can't. 
it will return an error. So let's go and handle those errors now. To do this, we're going to create a new variable called total row. We're going to use the if function, and then we're going to use is text on our calc type variable. This checks whether each value in that variable is text. If it is text, we want to return the value from the calc type. If it's not text, it will return the calculation generated by our total calc variable. Now we can come to our result and we're going to use the vstack function and the two values that we want to vstack together are array and also the total row. When we calculate, we get exactly the same result as we had before. So if we change alpha to Bravo, everything updates accordingly. But here is the key difference. In cell I4, if we change sum to average, it now performs an average calculation. If we change cell J4 to count A, it now counts the number of items. If we want to display a blank cell, we can simply enter space in that cell, which means we now have a dynamic total row in which a user can decide what values they want to return. Now there's one other change that we need to handle. In cell H4, if we change the word total to grand total, our conditional formatting no longer applies correctly. So I'm going to select a cell inside our array. I'll then select conditional formatting and manage rules. We can then edit our existing rule. We no longer want the word total. Instead, we want the value that appears in cell H4. So that means that to use this technique, we need to base this upon a column which contains a text value and not a calculation. If we change Bravo to Charlie, everything updates. If we change it back to Alpha, everything updates. If we change a calculation, everything updates. And that's it. That's how we can create a dynamic total row. Now, if you're thinking, I wish I knew how to build these types of solutions myself without having to resort to following YouTube videos, but actually being able to build them by understanding how everything fits together, then why don't you check out our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com. It covers everything you need to truly master Excel. And once you've checked that out, why not check out this video next? I think it's another one you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.